Well, for more, we're joined by one of the people featured in the documentary. He's Raj, Raj Patel, fellow at the Institute for Food and Development Policy, visiting scholar at UC Berkeley Center for African Studies, has written for the Los Angeles Times, The Guardian, and The Observer. And although Raj Patel has worked for the World Bank, WTO, and the United Nations, he's also been tear gassed on four continents protesting them. He's author of Stuffed and Starved, The Hidden Battle for the World Food System. Um, he is also author of The Value of Nothing. Welcome to Democracy Now! We're joined by author and activist Raj Patel, who's just come out with a new book, The Value of Nothing, How to Reshape Market Society and Redefine Democracy. The title comes from Oscar Wilde, who wrote, quote, nowadays people know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Raj Patel's earlier book is widely considered the authoritative work on the global food crisis called Stuffed and Starved, Markets, Power, and the Hidden Battle for the World's Food System. Uh, Raj Patel has worked at the World Bank, at the World Trade Organization, at the United Nations, has also protested them on four continents. He joins us now. People, I, I believe, use PowerPoint, but I, I like to kick it old school uh, and, and encourage you to use your imaginations. Uh, so uh, if you can imagine, for, uh, for me, an hourglass, so wide at the top, narrow in the middle, and wide at the bottom. You're wide at the top, narrow, and wide. Um, at the top, uh, there are the millions of farmers around the world who grow food for us. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, in, in terms of where agricultural funding, I mean, th there are sort of pots of cash that are available uh, for, you know, for, for certain things like, you know, farmers markets. And there's, I, I believe that there's a certain amount for agroecological funding. And you can be sure, you, know, you can be sure as shit that that's going to be pretty much first up against the wall now that we have the super committee wondering whether, you know, whether, where the axe is going to fall in. Oh, I can't remember how it was. It 15 million from Syngenta. Um, I, I think it was only five. Oh, was it five? In the end, okay. So f f five million dollar grant that was given by Syngenta, or the 500 million that was given by BP for research on biofuels. Um, and he found himself very precarious. I mean, found himself firstly denied tenure, and then after a big campaign, we got tenure uh, in this university. But in many ways, uh, we can see universities being bought up by uh, the private sector for, uh, you know, for a number of reasons. Because you know, a lot of great ideas come from universities like this. A billion people who are, who are going hungry every year, and a billion people who are overweight. Uh, and the connection between the two is that the way we get food today is through international markets. Uh, and international markets do two things. They drive down prices to the people who grow food, and they usually are the poorest people on earth. And the benefit of this agroecological system is not just a, you don't need inputs, you can save the world. If puts, you can save the world. If and the, uh, and the, the lobbying that we've discussed. Well, I think, in short, we need pessimism of the intellect and optimism of the will. I mean, we shouldn't be misty-eyed about the, 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 the trouble and, and the, the trouble we're in and the challenges ahead. But I am sanguine that there are groups like La Via Campesina, that there are move, uh, movements for food sovereignty happening around the world. Uh, and that does give me uh, some hope that we are seeing a, a transition away from uh, a world where we're seeing a billion people hungry and a billion people starving towards a much more sustainable food system. And do you, I mean, so you do see it happening in a, in a, a realistic future or is it a long term? Just a quick thought. Shifting away from this market-based mechanism for distributing food towards something that looks a little more socially and economically just. There's a very conscious decision, and there's been one for a while, that uh, small-scale, sustainable agriculture um, is... It's not surprising that hunger and uh, obesity and overweight are neighbors. And the reason that, well, the way it works is like this, that if you are uh, on uh, food stamps, on uh, suppl supplementary assistance, uh, in order to be able to make ends meet for you and your family, um, then what you're going to do is try and spend money on, uh, on as many calories as you can. You're trying to spend money on as much nutrition as you can get. Uh, and a dollar will buy you about 400 calories of Coke, uh, but a dollar will only buy you about 17 calories of lettuce. Uh, and when roughly you know a, a dollar fifty is what uh, you get in terms of food stamps per meal, of course you're going to try and you know make those make that dollar count in terms of calories. And if if your calorie options are limited, uh, then of course you're going to be heading towards buying uh, food that are rich in the kind of empty calories that are going to lead to uh, overweight and obesity. I mean this is a global problem, of course, and but certainly in the United States we see it very acutely that uh, overweight and poverty are often. Going
Namaste, everyone. Today is Saturday, and the planet for today's day in Vedic astrology is Saturn. And the overlord of Saturn is Hanuman. Hanuman is the statue you see here on this picture. But today, in honor of Saturn and to appease Saturn to get on his good side, we will chant Saturn's chant 27 times. If you'd like to chant along, close your eyes, sit up straight. Shraya Namaha Om Shri Shraya Namaha Om Shri Shraya Namaha Good for food and development laws also known as food first So so Raj history working on food and uh, particularly around a lot of the reporting about the food crisis makes it seem like a perfect storm, um, which is an unfortunate analogy because it, it makes it seem like that there are a whole range of acts of God that have conspired to, to make all this happen. Um, but these aren't acts of God. These, these are definitely uh, human-made. Um, and let, let's look at the reasons why the price of food has gone through the roof at the moment. Um, you've got uh, the, the, the price of oil um, being uh, today $135 a barrel, soon to $200 a barrel is, is what people are projecting. Um, now, on top of that, uh, well, I mean, that, that in itself feeds through to the food system because um, a lot of the way we grow our food is contingent on pesticides and fertilizers. Um, and one of the key ingredients in fertilizers is natural gas. So when the price of, of oil goes up, the, the price of natural gas goes up, uh, and the price of fertilizer goes up, the price of food goes up. Now, that's a political choice that, that, that we have, that we've made to move towards this chemical and and uh, agrochemical intensive kind of agriculture. Um, and that's that's certainly one of the, the elements here. Uh, another reason is biofuels, uh, or more properly agrofuels, the idea that you would grow food not, order, not in order to be able to eat it, but to set it on fire. Um, and that's what agrofuels is at the end of the day, it's burning food. Um, and that's a, that, that's a mad policy when the price of food is so high and, and, and it does contribute, you know, even the president suggests it contributes 15% um, to, to the cost of, uh, of, of food. Um, on top of that we've had bad harvests uh, possibly because of climate change and again climate change is something we made, we did that um, and that's something we can do something about. Uh, on top of that we've got um, a, a shift in the taste, uh, in tastes towards meat and dairy, which are very uh, fossil fuel and energy and food intensive, and, and they drive up the price of food too. And again, we can choose we can choose to, to move away from that as well. And finally, financial speculation. This is also driving up the price of food. Um, and you know, th these are all things that are absolutely so anthropogenic. It's a, th th there's there's no god here, uh, you know, uh, acting in weird and unpredictable ways. These are all things that we are responsible for and we can change. Uh, so, so that's certainly the sort of short-term story of, of the food price rises, and in the long term, you know, the the, the chronic sort of underdevelopment of uh, most of the world by a few rich countries and a few rich elites um, has also contributed to this. You know, the, the World Bank's uh, regime of structural adjustment policies um, have all conspired to destroy developing country agriculture uh, and substitute it with this, you know, either as an industrial export agricultural model or um, um, you know, to, to, to hook developing countries in many ways on US food imports. Uh, and that's why you're seeing riots in the streets, because people are demanding not only food, but they're demanding that their governments pay attention not to the international market, but to them. <laughs>